Brain cake is a delicious, sweet nourishment created by combining two or more brains. Mm. Mm. Welcome to a special episode. Special indeed. It is very special. We're breaking in a new mixer. So that's that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got like a new mixer and some new mics. And we got handbone and me and yeah. it's just us because jim's slumbering at the moment and on hiatus from brain cake and kiwi is elsewhere yes he is much love to him though i amen to that man so we're just going to chill out here on the couch guys and, and and hang out for a little bit but we got some interesting stuff to talk about i reckon where do you want to begin i don't i mean we can dive in to our, our our big topics we've got but i don't know man i just feel like there's been a lot that's that's went on recently in in like, like what a, a couple places that affect our lives so mm. for one we we always bitch about it but i'm gonna bitch about it some more fuck the microtransactions and Here halo comes a good bitching yes <laughs> fuck the microtransactions and halo i can't do that so we haven't been playing it but we've been playing mcc on the path to blue forever and always yeah apparently. i'm sorry that's it's just <laughs> do i really want to get the bitching all right it just it's just not the same i mean i love the grappling hook in infinite i love all that neat shit yeah but what's the point of playing what's the point of getting kills what's the point it it takes away from the fucking vehicle play a lot dude like what what in the hell all the vehicles it's like driving butter driving butter i, I do not like that no but other than that the campaign amazing <laughs> amazing this is amazing so i mean it is the story so okay let, let's talk about that for a minute okay. just focus on what the story covers so in the old halos you felt like you were just a cog in a big machine you were part of the unsc you know it, it wasn't you are the super soldier that's going to save us all it just happened to be that way yeah and in infinite i mean it's literally positioned as though you know out the gate you are the super soldier you are the savior of humanity uh, yeah i mean i understand it contextually there's been a, a lot of games that come before it but you know what i mean this one's a little mm -hmm. it doesn't feel right it's not your classic halo you know, ah, God, that's so true. And I've talked to Jim about that, too, a little bit. Um, since we've been playing one, um, well, we've been playing through it a little bit. There's, like, the enemy, like I told him, multiplayer was sort of a... That was a new ideal. Yeah, in, it, it was sort of just tacked on. Like, yeah. back then, it was more focused on campaign. But let's face it, they made the game in fucking eight months. Like, they went to Macworld... And then, um, well, shit, man. I mean, that was high quality graphics back then. Yeah, I, it was revolutionary gameplay. Nobody had used thumbsticks like that or anything. Halo yeah. changed a lot in, in FPSs, whether you know the gaming industry wants to admit it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and, and you know, they do admit it, they pay homage where they need to. Yeah, um, but 343, they want to make Halo their own thing. And I feel like the issue with that you can't. is that we loved Halo for what it was. Don't change. Right. If it's not broken, don't fucking fix it. You know what I mean? Like, hello, the formula fucking worked. It did. Look at three, <laughs> look at two, look at one. Like, it just fucking worked. They figured it out by three. I really f think they figured it out by three because Halo now, was little, you know, was its own thing. Then Halo Two, all of a sudden, multiplayer online, Jer, that changed everything. Two, I, look at that. That's something else. Two yep. created the fucking lobbies for Xbox because mm -hmm. before then there was no way to join lobbies. Shout out to anybody. There was that's no friends Halo list back in the day. Yeah, it's fucking like they they changed a lot for the Xbox. The Xbox was built on the back of fucking Halo. And now, Halo's just an afterthought for Xbox Studios. Yeah. It's just a figurehead. That's it. But it's not... It just is what it is now. It's sad. Yeah. What it, 
And I understand too. They they look at the rest of the industry and they go, "How could uh, you know? We see what people like in this game, and we see what people like in that mm-hmm. game. How can we bring those aspects into Halo and still keep it Halo?" And they get it, they did a good job. So instead of the power ups like in Reach and Four and the shit they did in Five, they they were like, "Okay, let's let's take it back to the roots. You you're gonna have the grappler and hook, which makes it, it doesn't." I'm a fan. Really, kind of makes I'm a, sense, but I'm it, a fan. It makes sense. They know you want to climb that mountain. That's true, and that's a big <laughs> issue. That's another big issue I have. Like the the biome that we're in, we're locked in. Mm-hmm. Look at all the other games we visited. Fucking snow areas. There was deserts. Yep. There was forest. There was fucking swamps and jungles. But no, we're stuck in the northwest biome with well, a lot of cliffs on a broken ring. Because of the grappling hook. Because of the grappling hook. The game was clearly designed around that one mechanic. <laughs> Let's give them something new. It's the strongest of your new abilities. Let's face it, the fucking drop shield is practically useless. Yeah. I never used the center motherfucker after fighting the elite. Never. That was the only time in the whole game. When spoiler they, alert, everybody. Yeah. When, <laughs> spo- yeah spoiler alert. Any like any time an elite went invisible, that's the only time I ever used it. That's the only use for it. But I was more worried about doing what I was doing versus wanting to go down on the D pad and, and select. Yeah, something else, like and know. it's a ridiculous button push to try to fucking choose it's the like thing. Over like over, and then you got to go down. Yeah, over, and then you choose down, up, left, or right. Yeah. Like what the fuck is that shit? Like, just get, <laughs> why can't I just hit like Y or something and cycle through them? Look at what three did. Three had. Stickies, fire grenades, regular grenades, brute grenades, and, and you could cycle through all of them at a push of a button. You didn't have to hit no D pad and switch this and that. No, show you the D pad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me and Jerry's big Halo fanatics, so. Oh yeah, so. So if we just confused you a little about the Covenant and the yeah Forerunner technology, yeah, you're not a Halo fan. You need to be one. You really do, man. So it. Not only did it push Xbox, like as a brand, but it, it, like I said, it changed the way that we did FPSs. They they introduced the dual, dual joystick the way that they did. Um, there was a lot of other stuff: the in-game lobbies, the friends list, the the way that they set up Halo Two multiplayer, <laughs> the way we used to talk to each other online. Seriously, I'm all. Your mom's obviously home. not home, eh? What? Well, Mom's then? obviously not home, that's why you're talking like that. I can't hear you, your mic is so shitty. I can't hear you, your mic is so shitty. I said your mom's probably not home, that's why you're fucking swearing all the time. No, actually watch. You want me to go get my dad? I'll even say Yeah, it. go get dad! your dad. Hey dad! Go, oh, hey Sam, go get dad, this guy doesn't believe me. This shit's hilarious, you want to talk shit to this dumbass? Yeah, I want to talk to your dad right now. No, no, no. Talk to my sister. Yeah, hey, let me talk to your guy. sister. You his mom, his, remember that chick that was over last night that threw up everywhere because my dick went so far down her throat? <laughs> that, that was his mom. Yeah, I told yeah. you. I told you. Just shut the fuck up. Let me up. talk to your wow, sister then. Oh, oh, no, no, no. They'll, they'll say dirty stuff all like their dick is one inch. What? What? Who told you that? Your mom. <laughs> A lot of bad. No, no, dude, no, dude, no, dude, I'm just kidding with you. Well, obviously. No, but your mom part was real. I mean, I'm yeah, not the, kidding. Yeah, the you mom joke, her. you're obviously no, young, because you mom jokes are, like, her. old. Like, your mom was all up on me last night. Mom jokes are, like, fucking... I, I remember you and mom, mom jokes out with a kid, too. Okay, stop, t- stop talking. Let one you stop talking. Talk Go get your fucking no, no, dad. No. I want to talk to him. Obviously, he's fucking raising you like a faggot, you know? No. I'll tell him not to okay. raise. I'll, 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 I'll tell him how to, to fucking you don't not have to raise kick a gay your kid. Out on me because you were abused, a little boy, and your ass is <laughs> alive because your dad raped you. It's okay. My what? Just my shut what? Up. what? Shut up! You're muted. <laughs> yeah, like we used to just sit in a Halo Three lobby and talk Dude, to one another, man. It, 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 I've been in the lobbies before on the news stuff, and it's like this don't even feel right. No, it, nobody it, talks. Nobody to one talks another. the way. Everybody's in their own party chat. Yeah. Everybody used to like party in and go, hey, and then yeah. they'd say your name, give you a hard time for a second, and everybody was friends. Yeah, everybody would try. This is another thing that gets me. So a lot of people will be like, well, your trash talk is just bullying. And I'm like, no, 
I trash talk when I play Halo. Look, if I'm playing you in Halo, I will call you everything under the sun. <laughs> Don't take me seriously. I'm just no, trash just talking Halo. you. Like, I'm just trash talking you because you're better than me or because you got the jump on me. It's just my way of venting my frustrations. It's nothing personal. It's really not. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll call you a, 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 a dick-faced cunt asshole or some <laughs> shit, you know, and sound like I mean it. Yeah. But it's just because you, you got to jump on me. Halo's just exciting, man. It is. Like, <laughs> the repetition of that formula is amazing. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't no Call of Duty. You know, Call of Duty's got its own thing. Yeah, it's know. it's not a modern war. It's very much a fantasy shooter, but it's not out of the realm of, like, possibilities. Like, you could see the military building a fucking Mjolnir armor suit. Mm-hmm. I could see the military or the Navy rather in this sense because that's what it is in the video game. So, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibilities for that to happen in the 23rd century. Well, we'll just see what happens. Amen to that, man. There, but overall, the gaming industry this year is just a big disappointment. Like, none of the games that's come out that I thought I'd be excited for, I really wasn't that excited for. I liked Call of Duty Vanguard. You liked it, Vanguard? It was beautiful. Well, that's the thing that gets me. Like, a lot of these games will be beautiful. But they, otherwise, it's like... I, uh, I liked how it played. I mean, it was a neat campaign. I really liked the campaign. Uh, <laughs> online was pretty cool. It was just different. I like World War II shit anyway, so... Yeah. I mean, the big thing with Call of Duty is... I feel like they, they went a little wild with the future stuff. Black Ops 3 and, and Future got, war, or Advanced Warfare. To me, it got it boring. Yeah. Just a lot of repetitive, fast-paced well, shit. I think a lot of that, too, but comes not, with the way that they release it, man. There's, like, one every year. A right stick with something. I mean, it takes Halo. How long? <laughs> yeah, there was, like, a lot of years between 3 and 4. And we're, we're talking... And then 4 and 5. Like, well, they released Anniversary well, Edition between it, 4 and it's 5. It's uh, 20 years old, right? Yeah. Okay, so... And we're just now getting the, the sixth, sixth game. installment. It's like four to five, six years in between games. Yeah, and you look at Call of Duty that's basically released a new fucking game every goddamn year. Like, I used to have a shelf of all the Call of Duties. <laughs> you know, like, it was just the same shit. Yeah. Like, they would change something about it or you'd have this campaign or whatever. It was just the same shit. But I do like what they did with Vanguard. I won't knock that. I feel like I got something going on for them. And thank you for figuring out mouth movement. Like, that's pissed me off for years. I'm like, we have the technology to go to the moon, but we can't figure out mouth movement correct. Yeah. You know. That that was a big thing that turned me off in Alan Wake. Like, I enjoy the, the story, but Rockstar did a bad job with, like, animating the mouth. Alan Wake? Yeah, Alan Wake. It's like a, a very narrative-driven story, um, and you shoot people that's in shadow. Uh, <laughs> okay. As long as they're in shadow, like, so the darkness has them. And it turns out that as an author, you're writing the story that you're playing in the game. It's pretty. It's it's a very interesting narrative. Um, but I'm excited about the remaster. Probably won't buy it. To be honest, I got Game Pass. I'll just play it on there. Have you seen the Knights of the Old Republic coming out soon? Is that a remake or is that a new a new story? I don't. I'm not for sure. Like, so Star Wars games. I don't know, man. I'm just not a big... I enjoy the movies. Beyond that, I'm kind of just like, it's whatever. I, I'm all about it. <laughs> but, I, I mean, I played the old Knights Republic when it was on, like, what, Xbox or whatever? I, think now, so, I loved yeah. it then. And I, I really wish they had a second one. So this is just... I'm just waiting. After seeing that trailer, hell yeah. <laughs> man, there's a lot of, like... A new shit that's coming out it makes me mad that we can't get the new xboxes <laughs> simply because of like all the new shit that's coming out and the technology that they embrace like with the lighting and everything like that they're wanting to sell me a product i can buy one right now but i gotta get six games with it i get all these games with the product yeah. you know what i mean i'm like why can't i just buy one no we can't do that <laughs> but I don't need an extra controller. All they promote is online play, so yeah. your buddy's not really there anymore. 
Is that for one you're going to throw and break? No, I guess so. That's that's for when the thumbstick wears out. Because let's yeah. face it, that's a big thing that happens with Xbox controllers. <laughs> it's like that that really nice one I got. I got the Elite, yeah. whatever. So they gave me an Elite one, and, and it lasted what a month. And it, yeah. I, I got bad drift, and the thumb locked on it. So I traded it back and got an Elite two. And I think they've corrected that problem. But you'd think for like a hundred and some dollars. <laughs> Right, you, you would know. think that they would have that fixed. But, now look at this. You would think after this many years, that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> right. Like, it was a problem on the fucking Nintendo uh, Nintendo Switch. It's it's a problem oh, on the Xbox controller. They had a horrible time. Yeah. With the, uh, what was it actually called? Uh, the paddles? I don't know. I just know they they, they call it joystick drift. That's just okay. what I'm going to call it, joystick drift. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, and then if you look beyond this, you got to look at the scalping that's really hitting the market hard right now with the release of the consoles. Yeah. This is all, it's been hard to get a PS5 and a new Xbox console ever since they released. I would imagine I'm their numbers bad. would look amazing right now yeah. if it wasn't that bad of a release. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are we supposed to do? I'm going to give somebody three but, times the, the amount for the fucking console. Something else. Like, it is an Xbox One. Everybody keeps forgetting that. It is an Xbox One, but it's the new version. Yeah. You know, I already got an Xbox, but, but it'd be nice to run a little faster, a little smoother, a little cleaner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, it'd be nice to get that 4K, 120 hertz, you know, beautiful fucking ray tracing graphics and but, instant loading on your fucking hard drive. Like, Remember us talking 10 years ago, imagine what games are going to look like in 10 years. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Now, look what we could probably do in 10 more years. Man, look, I'm at, we were talking about VR 10 years ago. Yes. Like, cannot wait. It's here, man. It's fucking here. You you let me put that on, and I went to space, and I'm looking at Earth, standing on the International Space Station. That is as real as shit to me. Yeah. Where can we go from there? <laughs> I'm telling you, wow. dude, hollow decks are coming. The future, we live in a cyberpunk world right now. We're getting it's there. Like, yeah, it's in its baby steps, in its infancy. We've got VR headsets. They're working on AR headsets, which is augmented reality. So you would see the room around you, but you would also have the 3D shit to interact with. Yeah. I imagine that's the way computers will go. Instead of having a monitor, you'll just have like a base station, and it'll be an AR projection into glasses somehow. Mm -hmm. That would make more sense to me. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. We got uh, quantum fucking processors on the way, which, I mean, it, regardless if you understand anything about technology, you understand the leap between a, a regular computer and, and a quantum computer that, like, yeah. does predictions and shit while it does calculations. That's insane. Right. When you got to cool something with, like, fucking uh, <laughs> liquid nitrogen... Yeah, you're you're doing some shit. You gotta. <laughs> everybody's able to afford uh, the things that the military's probably had for twenty years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, that makes me wonder, dude. Like sometimes I don't think the military is really that far advanced because when you look at these companies, the same companies a lot of the times that design military hardware and shit mm -hmm. design civ civilian hardware and shit. Like, I mean, I, I don't give think a military grade case for my phone now. I yeah, mean, like. We we used military GPS and turned it into civilian GPS. So I'm sure the military is probably using a different system. But I mean, it's not really. It's not going to be that different. It's more precise. Sure, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's fundamentally the same. I don't know. It, it, the tech the tech sphere is weird right now because you got shortages everywhere. And video games, you got companies that are garbage. Look at the NFT bullshit, man. You're bringing <laughs> fucking NFTs to video games. Have you seen the Crossfire no. X on on Game Pass right no. now? That game, uh, apparently, your shit in that game is NFTs. What the fuck, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you all falling for that? I, I hope, hope not. you're not. Right? I hope uh, not. Like, please, dude. <laughs> 
pyramid scheme after pyramid scheme. It is. That's what it feels like, man. And we could just be behind the times, not understanding it. I will give it that. No, Maybe no, 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 I'm no. not understanding the technology, but my understanding is that you're buying a place in line and the line never moves. And the only reason it has value is because you bought a place in line. That's it. It doesn't exist. Yeah. It's you don't own that. If someone took a picture of us right now and made an NFT out of it. Well, they yeah, they don't own it. We own it. It's right. our image. <laughs> like, oh, my God. You remember back in school like when they was going to have like a camera out, and they, you had to sign a paper, and your parents had to sign a paper like, you have a right to not be on camera. Yeah. You know, like I feel like everybody kind of forgot that. And like your yeah, your right to privacy kind of yeah. went out the window after nine eleven. I have an iPhone, like I can record you if I want to, like that's fine. But it's just, it's, it's weird. fucking weird. It is weird. Like you can't you can't make up a story anymore. Cause someone could be like right behind you, like with a camera. Yeah, like, I'm just or a recording. Wrong. Yeah. In a sense, some people are right, like we're being listened to all the time. Yeah, you are, because somebody's probably doing something, and you're in the background of their video for TikTok. Yeah, we we end up being the background to a lot of people's lives and don't realize it. Yeah, just like those sitting here. Yeah. (laughs) We're feeding it right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. But I don't know, Hambone. The world's crazy, and there's a lot of crazy shit people do. It explains why people do random shit like roll cheese down a hill as a competition. <laughs> I know you mentioned this last night, but you never elaborated. No. Please tell me about cheese rolling. Okay, so it's called the Cooper Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake. At Wake? Um, like, it's you it's know. British. I'm no. not for sure. Yeah, I don't think there's dead people involved. <laughs> rolling cheese. No corpses people. here, guys. Uh, but annual event held in spring break holiday at Cooper's Hill near Glau- Gloucester, Gloucester, England. Uh, I'm sorry, English, our British listeners. Uh, it says they raced on a 200 yard long hill after a round of double, whatever that city is, cheese. Glau- Gloucester cheese is rolling down the hill. Yeah, so I watched a documentary on this. <laughs> There's a chick that won it the last couple of years, and um, she's like, I think she was 15, 16 the first year she won it. Yeah. And uh, it's just fucking, it's fascinating. She about broke her her neck running after this piece of cheese. They chase the cheese? They chase the cheese down the hill, and the person to catch it wins. How many uh, logs or rolls of cheese are they? It's just one big roll of cheese. <laughs> what kind of cheese? Um, it's that that city's Glow Glow Gloucester oh. Gloucester. Until I'm paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm trying to pull a, a pull up a fascinating little. Yeah, here you go. This is 2018 version. Okay. It wasn't too far back. Cheese rolling comp- <laughs> compilation. So like. <laughs> This hill, man, is Damn. steep as fuck. Yeah. People rolling after this shit. Yeah, look at the, hold on. Look at these motherfuckers. Oh, my gosh. They'll, they'll break their goddamn necks going down this hill, man. Look at this shit. Look how steep this. That boy right there going to have so much grass up his ass. You see him <laughs> going like 100 miles an hour. After a piece gosh, of cheese. Gosh, damn. Somebody's going to break their neck, dude. I'm. It's insane, man. It's truly insane. Okay, so what just happened here? They tagged out to somebody else. So I'm not entirely sure. Um, I just know that like it's fucking insane. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this guy going down there in a red shirt. Jesus Christ. Yes. Did you see the piece of cheese run by? Let's let's back that up a little bit. You see it over there? Yeah. It's on the left hand side. There. That's a little piece of cheese, man. I don't know. It's a pretty good size wheel. Like a foot round or something. Um, let me see if we can find a. Gosh, I'm gonna hit him in the head. I hope he gets that cheese. I'm there rooting, you go. I'm rooting for yellow shirt, green shirt guy. Uh, guy, look, yeah. See, look how big a piece that wheel of cheese is, man. I wonder if it's good. 
I want some cheese. I don't know. I don't even know if they ever eat it. Um, but yeah, folks. So if you were looking for it, that was a cheese rolling compilation of 2018. <laughs> I love Jeez. the description. World's stupidest competition. <laughs> I mean, I, look, I man. I want to try for the cheese. I, want to get I don't want to break my damn neck going down that hill. I know I'd face plant something or somebody. Jeez. <laughs> it's a seven to nine pounds. It's a seven to nine pound round of cheese. They're just chasing it. Oh, my God. That's ridiculous, man. Um, so apparently there's a pub named after it and everything. I don't know. I mean, mm. People were fucking crazy. But you know what? That that seems to be a, a, a normal thing for British people. They get into a lot of crazy shit, don't they? Like, I ain't knocking our uh, United <laughs> Kingdom homies. Nothing like that. But uh, y'all got some traditions, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> like for, for instance, you ever, I mean, imagine them looking at us like during Halloween. Yeah. And they're over there like, you mean All Hallows Eve? And they do actual, like, creepy-ass shit. We're just walking around in Walmart costumes and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they really go out of town. And that being said, I don't know exactly how this is called. Uh, this happens in, where did I say, Welsh? Welsh. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> how do you begin to tell somebody about this? <laughs> Uh, the only thing to do, man, just give them the headline for this article. <laughs> Each Christmas, the Welsh tried to outsmart a horse skull puppet. <laughs> if you read that headline, what would you do? And what I'm doing right now? Like, <laughs> like, like here I am. I don't know much about England or nothing. I love right. I love the show about the crown and stuff, but that don't make me an enthusiast. <laughs> but I didn't know about this shit. Like the Queen right. lets this happen, Jer. <laughs> oh, well, I like that. One. Then they drink. Then they drink, well, okay. So apparently they get a horse head skull. <laughs> I, it's perfect. It's a bleach skull. It's the creepiest fucking thing you can imagine. It's got an ornament for an eye. Yeah, they put ornaments for its eyeballs and oh they put a God. bracket to hold the mouth and the top of the skull together so they can make it fucking talk. Oh my God. And to really sum it up, what? they dress it up like a Grim Reaper looking outfit. <laughs> it has a party of people that follow it and there's a person oh operating this puppet. And they what go door to door. There's children standing in the window like, yay, <laughs> like it's fucking Santa Claus. What? And this thing knocks on the door and gives you kind of like a rhyme in Welsh or whatever. And you got to out rhyme this thing. And if you lose, oh it gets to come God. in and drink with you and eat your food. <laughs> I'm dead fucking serious. Years ago, they tried to. Years ago, they tried to put me in the. This is a lie. Mm -hmm. I can't make this shit up. What are you guys doing over you, there? You all need to like come over here and practice this with us. I gotta see this. That's shit an in interesting. And this is a Christmas tradition. Yeah. And here we are handing out like just candy and well and for shit Christmas, for, man, for we Halloween. usually just get together and eat and, and like. Give gifts, right. like we don't do this. You like, where is this in the Bible? Singing carol songs, and here comes a dead ass horse <laughs> with somebody. Hey, mate, let me in. <laughs> so wait a minute. Let's let's get the okay. So <laughs> one seasonal bottom. specimen that's more <laughs> likely to inspire nightmares and visions of sugar plums is the. Uh, and I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't know Welsh, and I'm going to murder this, <laughs> but <laughs> it's called <laughs> Mary Laud, I think. Mary Lude, Mary Laud of Lude. South Wales, a festival, skeletal horse spirit with a penchant for rhymes. In the simplest <laughs> terms, the Mary Laud custom involves a group of revelers carrying a horse skull door to door, demanding entry through song. The focus <laughs> is on the Mary Laud itself, a jawed, articulated equine skull. Equine? It's the horse specimen. <laughs> Uh, decorated with ribbons, ornaments, and festive bits and bobs. Bits and bobs. It's very much an English thing. Um, <laughs> plus a sheet draped over the person carrying it, giving the whole thing a ghostly appearance. 
Um, it says it's caroling generally takes place around Christmas and New Year's, <laughs> though sometimes also in Midsummer or Halloween. Just whenever the horse decides <laughs> to come out. Whenever they fucking feel like it. <laughs> whenever they want to get drinking. This would traumatize my ass. I mean, we go to England one time and just and end up at this mill, get a bed well and breakfast, fucking... eh? Beating some fish and chips, and here comes a fucking a, a, a oh fucking horse God. bloke at my fucking door. <laughs> right. Oh I would God. lose my shit. <laughs> so, traditionally, when arriving at a house, a Mary Laud troupe will sing out a challenge <laughs> to the people inside before performing a sort of call and response called a plunko uh, plunko. Uh, anyone inside the house is then tasked with replying in a rhyme scheme even wittier than the creatures. After the rhyme battle, the Mary Lord is allowed inside where the players are given food and drink before heading out to darken someone else's doorstep. Like, what? I guess, man. <laughs> I guess. What, what if we had something like it around these parts? I don't... I, you know what? That room, we're all head and bloody bones. We don't dress nobody up as it. Have you, have you what? ever heard of raw head and bloody bones? What? Right. What are you saying to me right now? Raw head... And bloody bones. I've had a few nights like that, but go ahead. <laughs> so, my whole life growing up, my grandparents used to tell me, and when it was dark outside, yeah, don't get too far, a raw head and bloody bones will get you. So, I'm not for sure. And I may have heard I've something Googled, like this. Yeah, I've, I've sort of Googled this. Is and this, apparently it's just a thing people tell. You know, you know kids, okay. you kind of spook them. Okay, us talking about, you know, British people and their, you know, crazy. Weirdness, I, I yeah. mean, everybody's got some crazy some kind tradition of weird that's normal to yeah. you. Well, I mean, we got traditions, too. Like, do you all usually go to the grave sites of your ancestors every year and, like, decorate yeah. the graves and yeah. clean them we off call and it, hang out on the graveyard? We do, we do church on the cemetery or cemetery meet. Generally, we'll have a pastor that'll do, like, an hour's worth of service. Yeah. And then everybody comes down from the cemetery. And we'll have a dinner. Yeah. But for us, it's more of like a family gathering because it's usually just the immediate like, family there. Like every year, we always get together and we'll drive up on a mountain. And that's back when. Yeah, that's you know, where our cemeteries are, is on yeah, top of mountaintops. Yeah, to keep them. I guess the old thinking behind that was to keep them as far away off your land that you work <laughs> on or something. Yeah, like the, to you give wouldn't them garden or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So. Like, we get in this trucks, man, and drive up, and we always, like, rake it. We always get rid of the leaves. Yeah. We sit there and tell stories about them people. And yeah. Like, you get to hear about people that you wouldn't old enough to remember, you know? And it's oh, just, yeah. I, I think it's a very neat thing, and, it, and it's kind of sad. Not a lot of people do that. Like, It's a part of our heritage, dude, that, like, I'm not, it doesn't bother me. Like, I'm fine hanging out with the old folks and hearing about the past yeah. here because it's a very different area to live in. I feel like I've learned learned that here lately. Some that older yeah. couple I've met, and they're really nice people. Like, there's a lot of hidden yeah. stories around here. Like he was a, like he he was like twelve when World War Two ended. You yeah, know what so I mean? He's old. Yeah. Like and he told me what it was like, and you know, and I've only been able to read it or see it in a movie or something. Like yeah, me, yeah. You know what I mean? Like things was really different. Like we take so much for granted now. We do. We, yeah, I mean, <laughs> here we are bitching about Halo, and like back then you oh, had yeah. to go gather water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My grandparents, there was a spring where they went and got water from. Yeah. Why not? And they used to have to clean the spring out every year. And my parents did it because of the area that we grew up in. You know, of course, it's always behind times. Yeah. <laughs> Always, yeah. I mean, it's just the way we talk. And all the that way stuff. we talk. Well, we have a very uh, Kentucky is very much kind of a Dutch background, so it makes sense but the way not, that we pronounce mm, words. Kentucky is a weird state. It really is. Yeah, like Kentucky is pronounced Kentucky, <laughs> like it means land of like war. Like this is where all the native tribes come to to have their wars. Well. I just remember it as Last of the Mohicans. Yeah. <laughs> really good movie, guys, if you've yeah. never watched it. I've seen bits and pieces, never got into it. But no, oh Kentucky's kind of. You really need to watch it. Yeah. I'll tell you another good movie you need to watch Dances with Wolves. Nope. That one back there. American Hollow. If you can see the book, that is. Uh, 
a book of American Hot Oil, and that is... So, yeah, we've ahead, mentioned it a couple of times on the mm-hmm. show. Read that, the book. Yeah, read the book, guys. It's very interesting. But it's uh, the documentary based on my family, which I'm fortunate to have that part of, you know, yeah. my my family history over the course of like a year is backed up. Right. You know. It, it really, you know, captures a lifestyle and a way of life back then. Yeah, you it know. was it was at a time when no one really had access to video cameras the way that we right. do now. Everyone has a phone in their mm-hmm. face like we was talking. And like that's not a thing then. No, it wasn't. It was very odd to see somebody with a big like these were big cameras they came and filmed mm-hmm. with. These weren't your little handheld mom yeah. and pop things. People sat around and told stories and talked to each other. Yeah. You know. Like there's no internet. There's a part in it where they're sitting like my family's just sitting around the fire. Just yeah. talking about the way things used to be, and that's just what my family does. Yeah. Like, uh, even now. <laughs> no, we used to have big gatherings, you know, yeah. and just sit around and talk, man. How's everybody doing? Yeah, it's strange, which is interesting. Like, that's the thing in the book that she brings up is, like, what's lost and what's gained over, you know, mm-hmm. as time passes. And it, it's very interesting to watch it. And then when I go home now and I see what's changed physically. Yeah. And then I know, you know, I realize the people that's that's gone now that were there then. It's it's a very weird experience. Like I try to go back and watch the documentary, um, you know, if not once a year, once every couple of years. Mm-hmm. Because it, I mean, it's nice to hear those voices from people that yeah. you, you know, like it's it's really personal to you because yeah, you know, you're looking at something that you get to go back in time. And just remember yeah, that. I lived it. Well, everybody else sees it, and they're like, this is a fascinating window into a way of life that's pretty yeah. much died out. Mm-hmm. I don't know very many old people living like that anymore. No. And there's no young people living like that for damn sure. No. I mean, we have running water now. Yeah. That was a, that was a thing that my it, house didn't have for a long like, time. Bubble! Yeah, but you gotta let me cool down. Well, Daddy. Yeah, there's bubbles in there. I said to put them in there, so I did. <laughs> this is how you get the bath every night. I don't got no tub enough. You have to make do with what you got. You had a whale, and when I say a whale, a big hole in the ground that was yeah. like a few hundred feet that would fill up with rainwater. Yeah. And you had a pump at the bottom of it, and that's what fed your house. And if you had that, you had this had this big thing you put salt in. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And it would somehow filter the water. Yeah. But nobody was ever a blonde, like back in the 90s, <laughs> before we ever got city water in that area, because yeah. it was always more like a, a sulfur water blonde. Yeah, like an <laughs> orangish looking blonde. It's, 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 it's a weird, weird place to grow up, dude. It, you know, re- looking through that book and just reading some of it, especially seeing the documentary, like yeah. really open my eyes up a little about remembering <laughs> oh, about remembering remember when remember when <laughs> the lights went out in, in georgia Ch- yeah georgia i was gonna say chicago hey reba some fire man <laughs> i won't knock reba man oh my god earthquake on the camera sorry guys i'll <laughs> shake you in here <laughs> getting a little shaky oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> Man, and I don't know. There's my parents. So I see some people will share like text with their parents and stuff. Yeah. I don't get to do that with my mom and dad. They are anti smartphone. <laughs> They'll call you, won't they? On their house phone, yeah. <laughs> That's a thing of the past. They don't have a smartphone or a cell phone, period. Which it makes sense. Know where they go? Would, would they have service? I'm s- <laughs> I'm so glad the house phones are about gone because they knew you was home if they was calling you. I know you get home at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Call you as soon as you sit down and take shit. It don't make no difference with a cell phone, though. Ignore that shit. Yeah. I got that excuse. Hey, man, I must have lost service. You know where I live. It's bad. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's a bad area. That's one thing that gets me when I go over to mom and dad's, like, service is so fucking bad. I'm like, you guys don't understand. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I, I tell people to stop from there. You don't understand when you it's going back in a time bubble. It really is. Like it's it's like going back twenty to thirty years. Yeah. They they've just now got uh you know, they've 
they've had DSL for the last like five years, maybe. Right. And they've had a blacktop road for maybe the last ten or fifteen. I'll vouch for that. That road has never been blacktop in no. like the hundred years. Even, they've been a road there. Now that it's blacktop, it's in fucking horrible shape. Like I would prefer yeah. it to be in the gravel road because at least then they come by with a fucking grader <laughs> and filled in the potholes once a year. I don't even do that now with the blacktop. Like Roll County Blues, boys. <laughs> it's <laughs> oh my gosh, it's it's a bad area to live in. Yeah, I, I think it just made everybody tough growing yeah. up in an area like that. It, it's a very humbling experience when you get away from it. You you, you learn not to take things for granted. I you guess. really do. You know, like what? when I moved away, I finally had a flat yard. That blew my mind. Yeah. Like, I wasn't looking at a hill or a, a hillside or something. Yeah, you know? like the horizon goes from like left to right, not like you, you a mean, V-shaped You mean tell sky. me when it rains, I don't need to dig out the ditch. Yeah. You know, like, that had a place to go, like. Uh, well, hell yeah, I had a nice yard. I, I made that grass look sexy. <laughs> like, it was humbling for me moving away from mom and dad's. Because when I first moved away, the first place I went to Louisville, mm -hmm. like for college, that was very humbling. And because I was generally the only people I were around that I didn't know was at school. Yeah. And I'd been around those people since kindergarten, basically. Yeah. So when I left at 18... Went to a city where I knew nobody. Yep. It's a very humbling experience for a guy from the fucking hills. How often did, like, this will blow people's mind. Like, where I lived, I was 30-some minutes away from Walmart. Mm-hmm. You, on the other hand. Yeah, it was 45 minutes to get to the, the courthouse. The yeah. Perry County Courthouse. It's 30 minutes to the nearest town where you can buy groceries. And, and you know... It, I had the nearest store with I gasoline yeah. is like 20 to 25 minutes away. I, I've seen people, you know, around and yeah. stuff, and it's like, they go to the grocery store every day. Yeah, like, all the time going to Walmart, all the time buying something. I'm like, what, what, what's wrong with you? I was raised, you you get everything one good trip. <laughs> yeah, basically like once a month. Like You better not send your daddy that far out to go get something, you no. know? <laughs> And yeah. I feel like a lot of that, too, comes from their winter prepping. Because they, <laughs> they prep in the winter for, oh, yeah. like, months at a time. Your family still can food and grow a garden stuff? Um, They were until my Uncle Pat passed mm -hmm. away. Because he, he was the last one. Well, I won't say that. There's a couple that still kind of raise a garden, but I don't know if they can the way that he did. He mm -hmm. did it like my grandparents. So he, ro he raised the same garden area that they did. And all of it that they didn't eat through the year got canned, basically. Yeah. Like my granny eating. Oh, my gosh. How many green beans you set and broke up? Oh if you know God. anything about that, like green Far beans. Far too many. You pull the strings out of them and snap them. Got to pick them, get yeah. them all together, pull the string out of it, snap. So my Go fingers into the garden raw. with the wheelbarrow and yeah. pull them motherfuckers up by the roots. Yep. Fill the wheelbarrow up, wheelbarrow it back, pluck them off the vine into a bucket. Yep. Then after you've done all that shit all day, then you get the bucket and you string them and snap them. Oh, God. Laying there tired. <laughs> yeah, and like, it's even worse if it's shuck beans because then you got to string them up on the fucking thread. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, then man. I love shuck beans more than any other type of bean, man. Shucky beans? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, and that's all they it. are is like dried white, white half runners. Yeah. They'd, they'd string them up and hang them yeah. up and let them dry. Yeah. Granny used to have a sheet and she'd just like lay them out on the hood yeah. of her car. You know, if she wanted to do a lot at one time. But yeah, that's Appalachian stuff right there, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's some traditions that's yeah. dying out. Like, we never thought anything of it, you know? No, I always thought, like, well, fuck, if I ever need beans, I'll just go to grandma. Go to the store and get them. Like, yeah. Well, that's me now, yeah. But I yeah. don't think you can buy shuck beans at the store. No, you got to make it yourself. You know, <laughs> put a little pepper in there, a little bit of lard, everything fuck, comes out all big, right. Big piece of jaw bacon. Oh, my gosh. They don't even. <laughs> oh, y'all don't Let even them know. cook <laughs> all night long on low and a slow cooker. Y'all, we was raised on, like, oh. I'm going to say soup beans. Some people call them pinto beans. But oh soup beans, God. cornbread. There ain't nothing like a good cooker of soup beans. <laughs> Oh my God! And cornbread, if we it's made in a cast iron meals. skillet, oh, like we turned it into something simple and something you could, you know, ration. For biscuits a while. and gravy is a big thing. A lot of people don't understand. They're like, "What do you mean biscuits and gravy?" I mean, man, you get you some homemade biscuits. Yes, sir. Some of the biggest fucking homemade biscuits you can find. They gotta be good and fluffy. Mm -hmm. And then you crumble that up into a bowl. Oh, 
and then you got to have that good white gravy. It's got to be kind of thick. That's you, flour gravy. Yeah, you want bit. it a little a little thick, which really all it is is flour, and you want it made with either sausage grease or baking oh. grease. Oh, my God. <laughs> what you talking about? You cooking with bacon grease? Hell, yeah. And then, you, <laughs> then you take that gravy and you pour it over them biscuits. You got to have a little bit more gravy than you have biscuits. That way it sops up into the biscuits and you got that little bit Soft, you can so. just like whip around with your fork. Oh my God, man. You people don't know what you're li- <laughs> missing. That's a meal my granddad used to say that'll stick with you. Stick to your ribs. Like, and it does. Like it, it stay, When you eat that in the morning, you don't eat nothing else usually until about noon. Dude. I could eat, like, go to Taco Bell, right, and yeah. get the big box or whatever, and yeah. that and a couple of tacos, eat it, and it's, oh, man, I'm full. An hour later, oh, man, I'm hungry. Yeah. See, a big meal of soup beans, like something that'd stick with you. It sticks with you for a while. Yeah. You know? Well, I, arguably, it could be, too, with the soup beans. Well, I mean, you get beans with Taco Bell sometimes. With the soup beans, I think a lot of it could come from the cornbread. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because bread's a lot like rice. You gotta know how to make that cornbread. Yeah, gotta be gotta use the real cornmeal. Gotta be in a cast iron skillet. Lord baby. And that cast iron skillet's gotta be like four generations old. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are talking about things that everybody listening like, what the hell? Look it up. Yeah, man. You, you got the Google's. Look it up. You got YouTube. There's some YouTube channels. Some hillbilly cooking YouTube channels, man. Lord God. I wouldn't call it hillbilly cooking because. I don't like using that term to refer to my peoples. I'm an Appalachian American. Yeah, that's, I'm an Appalachian person. That, and it's Appalachian. I grew up in the fucking hills, man. My brain does not work the same as everybody else's, like, directionally. I can look at a mountain, mm-hmm. pretty much. I know where I'm at. Yeah. Yep. If you get me in the flatland, I get a little confused, because everything looks the same. Like, you can set me on top of a mountain, have me blindfolded, but I know where I'm at. <laughs> it, it, I don't know why, but I can figure my way out of that. But yeah. you get me flat somewhere, I have no idea. I don't know. It's obviously the geography that we grew up around was a little <laughs> different. And I don't know about you, but growing up where we didn't have the internet really or anything like that, I spent my time outside. I spent I my all, time running around through the hills, long. up and down the mountain sides. I didn't have to worry about no like, fucking PE class. Dude, I had shoes or flip flops, yeah. but I didn't wear them. Well, I wore my shoes when I was running through the hills. Mom would always be like, you get snake bit. I I, dude, I'd take off running through a load of gravels. Like, <laughs> I thought it was fun. Like, my yeah. feet were tough. I worry more about snakes now that I'm in my 30s than I did when I was fucking 10-year-old running through the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> now I go through the mountains, I'm looking for snakes. Back then, I didn't give a fuck. It's like I tell people about snakes that used to be in our area. I'm like, dude. This is the only area left that it's not so inhabited you'll scare them or kill them off. Yeah. They're in here because this is ancient, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've seen snakes, dude, like eight inches round. Like, okay. People can't understand that. I've seen some massive, um, what do they call um timber rattlers. Yes. Yeah. Them's a beast. Yeah, I think uh, my parents have a picture of one that they killed. Uh, it was in the early 90s, and it was humongous. Like, it was almost like six foot long or some shit. My cousin has one as a pet. Oh, no. That he raised. Oh, no, I don't think so. And he can pet her. No, that's not it's, That's not for me, my man. I don't go see my, my cousin Ted very often. <laughs> Great man, though. Yeah. Shoo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've we've hung out a while. Yeah. We've let it hang too. Yeah. It's been a pretty smooth cake. We've covered a lot of ground. You we've know, bitched. You gotta mix that icing up just right and you gotta smooth it over. Yeah. You gotta smooth it over. Here's some smooth icing for you guys. Follow us on social media. We got TikTok, <gasps> oh Facebook. Oh my god, we do? It's I think we got an Instagram. I don't know if Keegan uh, put that in our message. Um, if you haven't seen the video yet, there's a video about that as well. Well, what do you have to say about the social media, Timothy? Uh, still no social media presence. We appreciate you. Peace and love. Um, and blowjobs. And blowjobs. Peace, love, and blowjobs. Goodbye, everybody. Still no social media presence. Still no social media presence. Still no social media presence. Still no social media presence.
Be a presence. Be a presence. Still no social media presence. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've seen that. You need to go follow us on the social media, guys. And now you need to. Yeah, you really do. Let us know. Let us know what you think. I don't know. Look, right now, I'm in charge of posting on Facebook. I'm not really sure what to post on Facebook. Guys, give me some hints in the comments. What do you want to see on Facebook if you follow us on Facebook? If you think it's too fucking old and don't follow us on Facebook, follow us somewhere else. Yeah. Kind of mm-hmm. let us know what you want to hear and talk about. We'll talk about it with you. And you know yeah. what? You can, always, you can always listen to us on Anchor. Spotify, anywhere you find your podcast at. Yeah, all always, them places. Just just look for it. It's there. Brain Cake. You can look at our beautiful faces on YouTube. Yeah. Brain Check Cake. it out. Brain Cake Clips. We got clips. And you know what? You've been a dynamite crowd, and you deserve a round of applause. This has been Brain Cake, y'all.